Life Audio. The Samaritan woman is somebody that I think we oftentimes lump into this category as I will never be as bad as she is. And the temptation, I think, for women is to look at somebody else's sin and almost feel better about ourselves because our sin is not as bad as her sin. That's the issue that we're going to deal with today. Stay tuned. This July 4th, from Angel Studios, the force behind his only son and the chosen, comes an extraordinary true story of courage and redemption. Starring Jim Caviezel, the actor renowned for his unforgettable portrayal of Jesus and the Passion, and Academy Award winner Mira Sorvino. Inspired by remarkable acts of bravery, Sound of Freedom unveils the breathtaking true events of a dangerous mission to save young innocent lives. Sound of Freedom. Rated PG-13. May be inappropriate for children under 13. Go to angel.com slash freedom for tickets. Only in theaters July 4th. Hey friend, do you ever feel like the busyness of life makes it hard to slow down and truly connect with Jesus? Do your priorities and passions feel jumbled and out of whack? Then join me this summer on my podcast, How to Study the Bible, as we dive into Spiritual Rhythms, a six-week series that will lead us through six spiritual rhythms to help us slow down and make space for Jesus in the busyness of everyday life. To guide us, I've put together a free downloadable six-week study available at NicoleEunis.com slash spiritual practices. The study will walk us through God's word as we learn to embrace daily practices that draw us closer to Jesus. Each week on the podcast, we'll walk through one spiritual rhythm that helps us discover how to spend intentional time with God, align our passions and balance our priorities, and make time and space for restfulness and celebration. Download Spiritual Rhythms for free today at NicoleEunis.com slash spiritual practices, and I'll see you on how to say the Bible. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what he says in his word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach, and I have been there. I, too, was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. The story of the Samaritan woman was actually what birthed the whole She Hears project. I had spent some time really studying her in seminary and writing on her and even preaching on her. And you may have heard me share this before in other podcast interviews and things, but I started sharing this story and this lesson with the women in my community. And people said to me, you know what, this is bigger than us. You need to share this with other women. And so I started sharing it at different conferences and things I was speaking at. And I quickly realized that this is a storyline of scripture that number one, we get wrong. And number two, we miss the incredible value of understanding an aspect of who Jesus is. So we're diving into that today. Actually, this whole week we'll be in John chapter 4, and this is kind of long. It's it's 42 verses, and I'm going to go ahead and read all 42 verses today. In previ- other days, the rest of this week, I might not read all of it. I just might read the section that we're getting into, but I think it's important to start with this storyline of Scripture where you understand kind of what's going on in this picture. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John, though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. 
She said to Jesus, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. But, sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water. Then I will never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get more water. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you are living with now. You certainly spoke the truth, sir, the woman said. You must be a prophet. So tell me, why is this that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim, where our ancestors worshipped? Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask, What do you want with her? Or, Why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village, telling everyone, Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came, streaming from the village, to see him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God, who sent me, and from finishing his work. You know the saying, Four months between planting and harvest. But I say, Wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for the harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages, and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits the planter and the harvester alike. You know the saying, one plants and another harvests, and it's true. I sent you to harvest where many where you didn't plant. Others had already done the work, and now you will get to gather the harvest. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed for two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the Savior of the world. I want you for a minute to just kind of examine your heart. When I told you we were studying the woman at the well, was there any emotions that came up? I want to spend some time this week getting to know her. But I think it's important to start in this place of starting from scratch, almost, like we did with Mary. Um, I want you to forget some of the things that you're tempted to bring with you as you study the Samaritan woman. I want you to look at her story with fresh eyes, with a clear heart. And as we read about her and we approach her story, I want you to do that within the frame of mind of seeing her the way Jesus saw her. I don't know if you have thoughts on that. Or if it's hard for you. I think for me, when I first started studying her, it was. And, and if you don't know what that is, I, I examine you. I, I implore you to examine your heart. Because one of the things that I think is so common, especially with women, is this tendency we have to like almost, I don't want to say like it, but feel comforted by the fact that somebody has more sin than us. It gives you that feeling of, well, at least I'm not as bad as she is, or I'll never be as bad as she is. And so I might, you know, my life might be a mess, but at least I'm not cheating on my husband. Or, hey, I might have cheated on my husband, but at least I don't have a drinking problem. Or maybe I have a drinking problem, but I don't beat my kids. Or I might be my kids, but um, at least I'm, I have a job. Or I have a job, but at least I'm not scamming time. 
and I, I might not give it 100% at my job, um, and it might be a crappy job, but I, I'm not scamming time. Like, there's always this sense of, no matter what it is, this sense of comparison between our own struggle and somebody else's struggle. And I think sometimes that's what happens with her story. We almost like the fact that she has a lot of sin, that she carries a lot with her. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue talking about the Samaritan woman. Stay tuned. This July 4th, from Angel Studios, the force behind his only son and the chosen, comes an extraordinary true story of courage and redemption. Starring Jim Caviezel, the actor renowned for his unforgettable portrayal of Jesus and the Passion, and Academy Award winner Mira Sorvino. Inspired by remarkable acts of bravery, Sound of Freedom unveils the breathtaking true events of a dangerous mission to save young innocent lives. Sound of Freedom. Made at PG-13. May be inappropriate for children under 13. Go to angel.com slash freedom for tickets. Only in theaters July 4th. You are getting sleepy, very sleepy. Your CPAP mask is clamped tightly to your face. Right, my darling? Yes, dear. You will not toss and turn through the whooshing. You will not throw the mask. You will not dislodge the hose and blast air all about the bedroom. You will not wake me, your loving husband, who yearns for even a single night of uninterrupted slumber, please. It's not working, Harold. People who struggle with CPAP have partners who struggle too. Luckily, now there's Inspire. Inspire treats the root cause of sleep apnea inside your body. While you sleep, Inspire keeps your airway clear so you can breathe normally and rest comfortably. No mask, no hose, just sleep. When I snap my fingers, you will remember to visit InspireSleep.com to learn more. Inspire, sleep apnea innovation. Inspire is not for everyone. Talk to your doctor to see if it's right for you and review important safety information at InspireSleep.com. And I think that's where I want to start today. I want to start in this place of figuring out why that is. And I I want to know, do you get what I'm saying? Do you struggle with that? Or is that just me? Um, some of the women that I know certainly struggle with that. And I know it's messed up, but if we're honest, most of us have had similar thoughts in our life. And that's what I want you to do right now. That's your heart check for today. I want you to spend a little time with the Lord, just praying through that, praying through that response and trying to examine what it is about somebody else's sin that brings you comfort. Um, because the reality is, is one sin is what separates us from God. So my sin of even judging her is enough to separate me from God. That's why we need Jesus. That's why we're all so desperate to need Jesus. If you need to pause it, go ahead. All right, if your heart is clear, I want to keep going. I have a lot of thoughts regarding this portion of scripture. Um, but one thing that I think is very significant is that this is the longest recorded conversation with Jesus we have on record. Do you find that significant at all? I do. And it's not just because I'm a talker. I mean, that does give me a little bit of comfort. But it's because I recognize that Jesus did everything with intention. Remember, we talked about that last week. And so if Jesus does everything with intention, and the longest conversation ever recorded between him and another person was with a woman, we can clearly see that Jesus speaks to women with intention, sometimes first sometimes at great length, and he explains things to them, and he calls them to himself, and he allows them time to respond in obedience. And I just love that. That seems so simple of a concept, but yet we overlook it. We doubt that Jesus is talking to us, and we we have this idea that maybe I'm not good enough, or maybe my life isn't in order enough. But let me tell you, friend, um, he meets us where we're at, in the middle of our sin, in the middle of our mess, in the middle of our chaos. He comes to where we are, and he finds us, and he interacts with us there. Do you hear regularly from him? And if not, why do you think that is? And do you realize that you can? In fact, that's the thing that he longs for, because you matter so much to him. You are his daughter, and he loves you so incredibly much. I want you to meditate on that for the rest of the day today, that no matter where you're at, no matter what your circumstance, no matter what your sin, no matter where you have been, he comes to the middle of the mess to where you are because he loves you. And it's not about you and what you've done. It's about him and what he's done. It's about who he is. 
Lord God, I thank you for my friend that is listening today. Lord, I pray that right now you would overwhelm them with your presence and your tangible spirit to remind them that they are loved. Lord God, help them to understand that there is no wrong way to pray. There is no wrong way to reach out to you because all they need to do is really think it. And Lord God, I pray that you would meet them where they're at, that you would break through the fear or the judgment or um, the sin, Lord God, that you would break through those barriers that they may have up and that you would overwhelm them with your love. Lord God, we know that our any any hope we have for change, any hope we have for getting our lives together is only through you. So Lord God, we surrender our lives to you right now. Lord, I thank you that you hear our hearts and that you desire a relationship with us. I pray that you would be with my friends today. In Jesus' name, amen. I know you've been frustrated with being confident in how to tell the difference between hearing from God and wondering if it's your own voice. Listen, I know, I've been there myself. That's why I wrote the Bible study, She Hears, Learning to Listen to Jesus. This is a six-week study that takes you through the book of John, looking at six women in the life of Jesus. It also teaches the color method of Bible study, which helps you to learn how to really understand the scriptures. I include lots of cultural and historical information, and it really makes these familiar passages of scripture just come alive. This is a great study to do on your own, to do with some girlfriends or even some teenage girls, and it will help you really gain the confidence in how to hear from the Lord and set you up with some tools that will stay with you long after the study is over. You can find that on my resources page at shehears.org, where there are also some really good resources to help you in your spiritual growth. I pray that they are a blessing for you. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call in your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His. This July 4th, from Angel Studios, the force behind his only son and the chosen, comes an extraordinary true story of courage and redemption. Starring Jim Caviezel, the actor renowned for his unforgettable portrayal of Jesus and the Passion, and Academy Award winner Mira Sorvino. Inspired by remarkable acts of bravery, Sound of Freedom unveils the breathtaking true events of a dangerous mission to save young innocent lives. Sound of Freedom. Rated PG-13. May be inappropriate for children under 13. Go to angel.com slash freedom for tickets. Only in theaters July 4th.